Well, what have we here? What we have here is a new bracelet for Seiko SKX 007s and 009s, and it's from Strap Code. I got it uh, via Amazon, and I think it was about $55. So, um, this video was about this bracelet. I'm going to put it on this watch. I got it because I really like metal bracelets best and uh, so I decided I have a, a Jubilee bracelet on my 007 and I thought I would get this for the 009. What comes with uh, Seiko watches or these Seiko watches is a Jubilee, you know, like a, a Rolex Jubilee homage bracelet. And it's really loose and floppy. It's very lightweight. Uh, I've done a review about it, um, so you might want to check that out. Uh, it's actually a really comfortable bracelet. But I thought I would try this Oyster Style. So this is like an homage to the Rolex Oyster Style bracelet. My first impression on pulling this out of the bag is it's pretty heavy. It's uh, It feels like it's really nicely made. I've, I've pulled it out of the bag before. It's got solid end links, which is a, a good thing. Now it's still got some plastic on it, uh, protective plastic, but uh, it's got solid end links. And uh, all of the uh, links seem to be solid. All of the other links seem to be solid. And it's got screwed links. You can adjust the size with a very small screwdriver. The uh, clasp looks like it's, uh, I don't have the Jubilee down here, but it has buttons on the side as opposed to just a, a clasp that you uh, flick open and then like this. So uh, it's kind of locked as opposed to the Jubilee style one. So um, let me get this unwrapped. I'm going to mount it on this watch and uh, then I'll talk about my impressions of it. So I've taken the watch head off of the um, NATO strap. First thing I got to do to be able to put this uh, bracelet on is to get the old pins off. And, you know, honestly, I can just do it with my fingers since the uh, NATO strap is out of the way. So that's nice and easy. In order to put the bracelet on, though, I'm going to use this pin tool. Ah, love that. Okay, impressions now that the bracelet is installed. As I said from the beginning, I think it's a really nice bracelet. Um, 55 bucks, I think it's a really good bracelet for the money, no doubt about it. It's screwed together. Um, it's got a really nice finish. It matches the, uh, the Seiko SKX series very nicely. Uh, it's a little heftier than the Jubilee style. And, uh, you know, I think it looks pretty nice. It, you know, it, it doesn't really compare to, say, uh, an Omega Seamaster uh, bracelet. But, you know, it's pretty darn nice. So, uh, I give this a thumbs up, and I think I can recommend it. All right, I thought I would uh, kind of wrap up with a comparison between the uh, Seiko Jubilee style bracelet and the uh, I guess it's strap code but you know probably a million online sellers sell this very thing so I'm just gonna call it the oyster look-alike uh, bracelet that I got from strap code via Amazon just putting them side by side I would say that the uh, Jubilee is slightly more blingy. It's a little shinier. It's got uh, sort of different finishes going on. And I guess that makes sense. I think I'm no Rolex uh, expert, but um, I believe the Jubilee was used more on their classic watch designs and the Oyster was used more on their diving watches. So it's it's not that surprising that the Jubilee is slightly more blingy. However, I think it works really well on either watch. Now, as I've said in my uh, SKX 007 and 9 review before, it's a very 
rattly, loose uh, bracelet. However, it's very comfortable because it's so flexible. So I don't hold that against it. I really like this bracelet a lot. The uh, Oyster style is not nearly as rattly. And that's because it just has fewer moving parts and it also has more solid pieces in it. It's got the solid end links and uh, solid uh, links all around, really. So in terms of sort of a quality feel, the Oyster probably wins out a bit. Uh, fit is just fine too. There's a little bit of flex in it, not a ton. Uh, so it's, you know, it's really just comes down to personal preference. I like both of them. Uh, let's look at one more thing though. Um, in terms of the clasp, you can see they kind of followed the design, the roughly followed the Seiko design uh, for this oyster strap. Uh, similar style of clasp, not identical, but it does have a lock mechanism. The Seiko doesn't have that. <clears throat> you just pull it open if you have any strength. So here's a, here's another difference. The deployant um, mechanism on the Oyster is arguably a nicer design. This is much more like um, the one on my Omega Seamaster, for example. And the uh, Seiko's is just stamped steel, whereas this is uh, forged, I'm guessing. I don't know if it's stamped with a nice finish or actually forged or, you know, whatever, some other technique of manufacture. But again, I don't hold this against the Seiko. I think Seiko's in general are a really nice uh, bargain in the watch world. And that goes for their bracelet as well as for the aftermarket folks. I think this this uh, bracelet was a really good deal too at 55 bucks. So it comes down to personal preference. You could get an SKX007 or 9 on the rubber, save yourself a little bit of money there, and then add the Oyster if you prefer that. Or you could start with one of the watches and just get the Jubilee on it. Um, I haven't looked at the prices, so I'm not sure whether uh, what I'm saying is equivalent in price. But the point is, you can pick, and, and these are both really nice choices. So anyway, there you have it. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back. <laughs> Thanks for watching, get it? And I'll be back with more watch stuff as time goes on. Catch you later.